Dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. Hello, I'm Spooky Bill, and you're watching Pathophysiology of the Living Dead. Today we're going to take a step back and look at the lymphatic system and the lymphoid organs. Now, if you remember in episode 3, pausing for a minute, neutrophils are by far one of the most abundant types of white blood cells, making up 54 to 62 percent, followed by eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes all of which are developed in the bone marrow, though monocytes and lymphocytes further divide and develop outside of the marrow. Develop and mature outside the bone marrow, and that brings us to today's topic. The lymphatic system is a network of vessels and small organs called lymph nodes, right, through which a fluid called lymph is carried. Now, lymph is comprised mainly of interstitial fluid. It carries fats and lymphocytes to the bloodstream. These vessels, which are called lymphatics, pictured here, are separate from the cardiovascular system, pictured here. But as you can see, they're still pretty uh, distributed throughout the body. And if you remember in episode 3, I also stated that if a pathogen can't gain direct access to the bloodstream, it can travel along these lymphatics. Now, these lymphatics always flow one way. They always flow to the heart. And as they travel, they they pass through these secondary uh, lymphoid organs, which you know is lymph nodes, um, and will travel, and it will eventually drain into the uh, subclavian vein at the lower neck. There are two types of lymphoid organs, primary and secondary. The primary lymphoid organs supply the secondary lymphoid organs with mature lymphocytes already programmed to carry out specific functions, but not yet activated. More on that in the next episode. Now the primary lymphoid organ consists of the bone marrow which it is at the center of all bones and can be considered the largest tissue of the body. The bone marrow produces lymphocyte stem cells. From there one subset of stem cells is going to stay and it's going to mature into B cells. The second subset is going to travel to our next primary organ, the thymus, where it develops into T cells. More on that in the next episode. The thymus is a flat bilobed organ that sits over the heart. It grows from birth until puberty, at which point it begins to atrophy and is replaced by uh, fatty tissue. Now, it's believed that the thymus produces enough T cells in early life to supply the entire immune system. Once B and T cells are mature, they'll travel to our secondary lymphoid organs, where they'll either stay, or they'll join a large pool of lymphocytes circulating from the lymphatic system to the cardiovascular system and back again. This helps uh, increase their chance of exposure to any foreign pathogen. Which brings us to our lymph nodes. Scattered throughout the lymphatic system are these honeycomb-like filters. And when you have swollen glands, Right, that's your lymph node. It's obstructed. It's fighting a pathogen. Um, as the lymph flows through these nodes, it enters sinuses that are filled with lymphocytes. And between these sinuses are macrophages and macrophage-like cells. Next we have the spleen. It's the largest lymphoid organ and sits in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. It acts as much the same way as lymph nodes do, only on the cardiovascular system. Its job is to filter out old blood cells and any foreign antigen. And inside, it's filled with lymphocytes, macrophages, and macrophage-like cells. And then we have our tonsils. Well, some of us do. Others have had them removed. Now, the tonsils sit in the pharynx and have openings inside the pharynx. Their job is to respond to ingested or inhaled pathogens. And like all the lymphoid organs, they're filled with lymphocytes, macrophages, and macrophage-like cells. Other areas of lymphoid tissue include the mucosal-associated lymphoid tissue, which lines the uh, gastrointestinal system, the uh, respiratory, and urogenital system. Now, these are localized areas of lymphocytes and macrophages at the, some of the major portals of entry. And next we have the appendix. Again, some of us do, some of us don't. Which is rich in lymphoid tissue, but it's debated whether or not it's actually a lymphoid organ. 
Now, the lymphatic system is often how cancer cells will metastasize or move from one area of the body to the next, or they'll stay in the lymph nodes and create secondary tumors. So it is entirely possible that the zombie-causing pathogen w could travel this way, but it's not the fastest way to travel, and it's actually, they would have to contend with all those lymphocytes, the B cells, the T cells, the natural killer cells, or NK cells, and how it can outsmart those are what we're going to talk about in the next episode. So that concludes episode 6 of Pathophysiology of the Living Dead. I know it was a short one, but it was necessary to, uh, to where we're going next, which is to the B and T cells and NK cells, right? Those are all lymphocytes. Feedback is always welcome. Leave it in the comments section, either on the blog or YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching, and remember to stay spooky. Pinnacle. Ah!